now that Jana is here, we can begin. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It is Monday again, August 24, 2020. And um, we were just talking this morning about all the uh, thunder and lightning happening around us yesterday, last night. So I hope everybody had a peaceful sleep. <clears throat> we were commenting this morning around the breakfast table as usual. We're, we're just wrapping up breakfast over here. <clears throat> How <clears throat> it was, I found it amusing that um, plenty of people last night on Facebook were uh, expressing some, some form of anxiety over all of the rumblings in the sky, the thunder, the lightning. And I was telling them, <clears throat> you know, it's music to my ears, having come from the Philippines where this kind of thing is a normal occurrence um, every, uh, you know, every uh, rainy season back there. So it was really nothing scary as far as I was concerned, but I could understand how plenty of people uh, felt a little uh, unnerved yesterday by... Uh, hearing all of that thunder. And of course, there was a threat of lightning that might uh, strike um, areas that are vulnerable to fires. So, so the fear is understandable. However, you know, be at ease because it's not as dangerous as, it's, as, as it sounds, really. Um, I grew up with thunder and lightning all the time. So it wasn't that much of a, a concern. So I still slept peacefully last night. I hope you all had a peaceful sleep too, despite um, the uh, dangers lurking around us with all the fires. Let's continue to pray for all of the uh, firefighters and uh, all of the personnel on the ground and all of the people affected by the fires around us. Let's keep them in our prayers and let's petition our Lord and Our Lady to uh, put an end to all of these uh, challenges that we are experiencing these days, not only with the fires, but still with the uh, coronavirus also. So let us, let's pray for all of these intentions. Okay, so today we are commenting on the Gospel of St. John. Chapter 1, verses 45 to 51. Today, by the way, is the feast day of St. Bartholomew. Who is St. Bartholomew? Huh? He's an apostle. He's an apostle. What's so special about St. Bartholomew as an apostle? Well, what's special about him is what we're going to read about today's gospel. Okay? He is Bartholomew, or otherwise known as Nathaniel. See? He's also Nathaniel. So, oh, it might be uh, all the Nathaniels out there who might be celebrating their birthdays today. Uh, I don't know if it's, uh, I don't know if Nathaniel Cardona is celebrating his birthday today. But anyway, nice name, Nathaniel, right? But he's also known as Bartholomew. Okay, so today we're reading about the first time he met Jesus. So Philip found Nathaniel and told him, so Philip was a friend of Nathaniel. Philip was one of the first apostles who followed Jesus after the baptism um, of our Lord in the Jordan. And told him, we found the one about whom Moses wrote in the law. And also the prophets, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. And Nathaniel must have looked at Philip. But Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Somebody hears that in today's culture. I guess anytime you hear that kind of a comment would have been taken as an insult, right? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? <laughs> and Philip did not dare argue with him. And he just said, well, come and see. Come and see for yourself. Okay. So, okay. So, good. Nathaniel went along with Philip. 
And then there they were. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said to him, they haven't even been introduced yet. Yeah? Nathanael was just walking with Philip and maybe at a distance, Jesus already saw him <clears throat> and said, here is a true child of Israel. There is no duplicity in him. So our Lord tells Nathaniel, well, and tells whoever was listening around him, here, here is a man who is a true son of Israel. There is no duplicity in him. We're going to comment later about what that means. Okay? Nathaniel said to him, how do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. So apparently that was where Philip saw him. He was maybe under the shade of a fig tree and then Philip said, Hey, buddy, come here. You know, hey, we found Jesus. So, uh, come and, uh, and you know, uh, 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 I introduce you to him. Nathaniel answered him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Do you believe? Just because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree, you will see greater things than this. Pay attention to the next lines. You will see greater things than this. And he said to him, Amen, Amen, I say to you, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending. On the Son of Man. I find this last line very significant. The reference to angels. Because that's exactly what I want to talk about today. Our Lord could have said anything else. He could have said, oh, you're going to see greater things than this. Like me raising the dead to life. You're going to see greater things than that. You know, me knowing you were under a fig tree. Oh, that's nothing, you know. You're going to see the deaf hear, the blind see, and many more miracles. No, but our Lord chose to use angels as a proof that you're going to see more of the glory of God. How? By witnessing angels coming up and down. <laughs> Descending and ascending on the Son of Man, meaning himself, referring to himself, the Son of Man, right? I'm going to make the connection in a while. But let's go back to the compliment that our Lord gave Nathaniel. He said, here is a true son, child of Israel, in whom there is no guile. That's the original translation, in fact, in the Old English. In whom there is no guile. And in the, in the modern translation, it says, In whom there is no duplicity. See? There is no duplicity in him. How do we understand that term, duplicity? Huh? Duplex, meaning? <clears throat> Like a double, yeah. double-sided, right? There is one face, there is one profile of him that is that looks like this. There's another one that looks like this. In other words, this is this is a metaphor, uh, 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 a two-sided, two-faced uh, uh, is a metaphor used to express that. Well, you know what? You really don't know this person because. Sometimes he shows you his good side. Sometimes he shows you a bad side. Or sometimes he shows you uh, this, this uh, aspects of himself. And sometimes he shows you this aspect. Oh, you really don't know this person. You know, you cannot trust him, in other words. Because you don't know what about him is true. In other words, a person... A person who is, uh, 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 how do you, uh, well, what's, what's the uh, adjective uh, that you can use here? Uh, has no duplicity. So what is the positive term? <laughs> in other words, 
In other words, a person who is not transparent, <clears throat> okay, is is some per, is a person with duplicity. He has two faces to himself, or maybe three, or even four, or even five, that you cannot really tell whether this person is being true to you or not, whether this person is being transparent to you or not. Okay. Sometimes we use the term plastic, right? Oh, this guy's being plastic. You never know if he's really being true or sincere in what he is saying. That's very bad, right? Very bad if people perceive us to be like that, that we are not transparent. They cannot see through us. They cannot see the clarity of who we are as a person. Why? Because we have several layers. We have several different ways by which we project ourselves. And I tell you what, a person who is like that, many times, is a liar. Many times, is insincere. Many times, is hiding something. Right? That's why he only wants to show his good side. His good side. <laughs> and he hides the things that are not pleasant. The things that people, that he doesn't want other people to know about himself. He hides them. It's, it's an ugly, it's an ugly characteristic. If people cannot know you for who you really are. And this is what happens to, to liars, to people who don't know how to tell the truth. See, But for Nathaniel, he was praised by Jesus because he was very transparent. What you see is what you get, so to speak. Right? Yeah, this is me. This is I. This is me. You know, I'm not hiding anything from you. I'm not. I don't have another personality to project to you and just because you are this kind of person or you are that or you are what or I have one kind of personality at work and I have a different personality at home and I have a different personality when I'm dealing with people, other people outside of the home or work or whatever it is or my friends. <clears throat> it's a very ugly, very ugly <clears throat> kind of uh, 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 character. Right? Actually, it's a lack of character. You don't have character if you're like that. Okay? The people who really have character are those who are very truthful. So transparency is a virtue. And transparency is a virtue that is born out of a few things. Number one is being simple. Okay? Simplicity aids with transparency. Number two. Purity, purity of heart, purity of mind, purity of body. Actually, if I were to arrange this into a hierarchy, I think purity of heart, mind, and body is an even more uh, important uh, way of living transparency. What does it mean to be pure of heart, pure of mind, pure of body? Well, purity of body is very easy for us to understand right you don't you don't use you don't abuse your body for uh, pleasurable gain outside of its normal use purity of heart means purity of intention that that you you uh, you don't entertain evil desires for other people purity of mind means you always try to seek the truth Seek the truth and speak the truth. Right? And then simplicity being, well, you don't enter, you, you don't muddle truth. See, simplicity means you don't muddle truth with layers of complications in order to, 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 to mitigate the circumstances or consequences of your inability to speak the truth completely. Okay? You see, complicated people are, are the types of people who have to give plenty of excuses for why they are not able to do what they're supposed to do. <laughs> okay? Complicated people are those who create 
a, a, a dramatic, uh, sophisticated story that, that, that cloak uh, the, the, the otherwise very simple truth that they could have just spat out and spoken about. But no, since they're not truthful, uh, they, they try to hide the truth, especially if it's not going to put them in a good light. Then, then they, they complicate that lie with different layers of other um, <clears throat> information that would make them appear good and mitigate, lessen, to lessen the bad effect of their lies. That's what a complicated person does. Okay? And that is why it's so hard to see through that person because there's so many layers of lies on top of each other, okay, that uh, you don't anymore know which to believe, which to trust, okay, with what a liar tells you. Okay? That's, that's the complication that liars uh, uh, um, provide. Okay, and then, uh, why does this chair keep on going down? <laughs> it's just, my, my stool keeps on going down. Okay, another, another uh, indication of transparency is openness. To be open to the truth all the time. To always welcome the truth as it comes to you. Okay? Uh, don't hide from the truth. Don't try to escape from the truth. Don't try to run away from the truth. Be open to know the truth and seek the truth and find the truth. Some people hide from the truth. Why? Because they're afraid of finding out reality. And when you are afraid of finding out reality around you, what happens? You become afraid. Okay? You run away. You become afraid. Instead of being open to the truth, you end up, you end up uh, running away from it. And therefore, it adds up to the complications <laughs> that, you, that you pile up on yourself. Right? Okay? And it, it, it muddles, it muddles reality, it muddles truth, and therefore you cannot express truth. Another aspect of this transparency is sincerity. Sincerity, which, just, which, which is another, another way of saying being truthful, right? Being truthful, but sincerity is, is not just telling the truth. Sincerity begins with, understanding the truth about yourself. Okay? Sincerity is understanding the truth about yourself, about the, the, the aspects of your own character, about your virtues or your vices, about understanding what it is you need to improve about yourself and humbly accepting that you need improvement about yourself. So all of that is sincerity. Okay. So this little virtues from purity to simplicity to openness to sincerity, they all accompany, they all accompany this character trait of being transparent, of expressing yourself the way you really are as plainly and as simply as possible. And this is the kind of transparency that Nathaniel was praised by Jesus in today's gospel for. A man, true child of Israel, in whom there is no guile, in whom there is no duplicity. So lesson, lesson we learned here. Always tell the truth, right? Always stick to and abide by the truth. The truth about yourself to begin with, right? Sincerity. Then to be open 
to accept truth and understand the truth. Then the simplicity not to complicate truth with layers of lies. And the purity of heart, mind, and body, which accompanies and, 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 uh, and, and, uh, and, and uh, removes the layers or the prisms of truth as we express ourselves to others and to God to begin with. Now maybe the question is, well, what helps us to tell the truth? What will help us to always tell the truth? Well, there, there are many prescriptions we can give here about how to tell the truth, right? But I will simplify it for you. And I'm going to simplify it for you using what our Lord says here in the last part of this gospel, where he says, oh, you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? Well, you know, wait a minute, you're going to see more. What is the more? You're going to see angels. Ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Angels. Why is that a great proof of the glory of God? The glory of God who is all truth. Right? I am the truth, the way, and the life. So God is the source of all truth. And what, 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 what's got, what do the angels got to do with this truth that the Son of Man is? What do the angels have to do? You know what? It's, a, it's like our Lord was saying here. Your angel is your, is your best friend when it comes to expressing the truth. Your angel is your best ally. If you find it difficult to tell the truth, what you need to do is hold your tongue when you're about to tell a lie. Hold your tongue. Pause. Pray to your guardian angel. Ask your guardian angel, help me to speak the truth. Help me tell the truth. And in an instant, you will see your angel ascending and descending. <laughs> in other words, metaphorically, that means your angel will come to your aid. Your angel will be there to help you speak the truth. Okay? Your angel will help you speak the truth. So my simple recommendation to you, my children, is always, always talk to your guardian angel. Be good friends with your guardian angel. Be good friends with your guardian angel. Ask your guardian angel to help you have the kind of transparency, sincerity, openness, purity of Nathaniel. So that we too, all of us who live by the truth and abide by the truth and speak the truth all the time, will merit the same praise that our Lord gave Nathaniel by the time that we meet with our Lord, the Son of Man, during our particular judgment at the end of this life. It will be nice it would be nice to hear our Lord welcome us in heaven and say, Oh, this, welcome, uh, Mia, welcome, Chevelle, welcome, Joseph. You are a true son of Israel. Eh? You are a true son or daughter of Israel in whom there is no duplicity because you have always spoken the truth. You have never been afraid of the truth. Welcome. Welcome. Now you can see my angels. Now you can, well, you, can, you can see your guardian angel who helped you always tell the truth while you were on earth. See? It would have been a fantastic, beautiful way of being welcomed in heaven. Okay? So today let's give thanks for uh, St. Bartholomew, St. Nathaniel, um, for reminding us, for reminding us of the importance of transparency, of truth, and all the other virtues that accompany such, such an aspect of character. Okay, that's it for us, folks, this morning.
Oh, yeah. Well, we like to greet. Uh, we'd like to greet uh, Tita Susan, Aunt Susan, uh, Lissing, who's celebrating her birthday today. We will keep you in our prayers and hope you have a a fun and enjoyable birthday. How much is it going to be now? Uh, Seventy something. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Okay, have a good day, everybody. And those of you joining us on this broadcast, thank you very much. You know what? If this helps, uh, I'd like to invite you to join us every morning. Uh, we do this every day, every morning in the Kleachko household, uh, except the weekends. We, uh, we do a gospel commentary. And I do this in order to help my own children understand the message of the gospel for the day. And... Uh, if it's going to help you and help your children, well, you're all welcome to join us and you're welcome to replay these commentaries so that your children might also benefit from it. But more than that, I'd like to encourage parents um, to, you know, do this same thing or something similar or some kind of effort uh, like this. This is just the way that I thought uh, we could do it in our own household, but everybody can be creative and develop your own way of helping your own children grow up in the faith. Teach them the basic tenets of our faith. Teach them the catechism. Teach them how to understand the message of Jesus Christ and his gospel. Let's be creative in this because it is our obligation as parents to help our children in this journey of life and faith. Okay. Have a good day, everybody. Those among you in the uh, across the globe who are about to hit the sack, may you have a peaceful and quiet sleep. Good night. Have a good week ahead of you, California. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.